DCS Star Frogs. My name is Travis, and today I'm going to do a quick video on isopods for you guys. I've got my isopod collection back here behind me, and if you're wondering why I haven't done a video in a couple weeks, it's actually because I've been busy planning my wedding and getting married to my beautiful wife, Anne. So that's what I've been up to. I'm just going to do this quick video on isopods and just kind of go over how I take care of them and how I breed them. So without further ado, let's get started. So for substrate, I use a pretty basic mix of charcoal, coconut fiber, sphagnum moss, orchid bark, and leaf litter. And I keep mine pretty dry. I spray it, you know, a couple times a week on one side of the culture so that they can get some humidity. And that's about it. As far as food, I make a homemade powdered isopod food. I got the recipe off of David Birkbeck's uh, YouTube channel. I'll leave a link in the description. I also feed a variety of fruits and vegetables, just scraps that I have from around the house. These first isopods I'll go over are Trichorina tomentosa, the dwarf white isopod. And what's interesting about these is I've actually heard that they're parthenogenic, which means that they're all females and so it only takes one female and they can start reproducing as where with other isopods you need a male and a female so that they can reproduce. Uh, this makes it so that they can reproduce very quickly. These make a great cleanup crew for terrariums and vivariums and frogs seem to really like them as food also if they are in your vivariums with dart frogs or other small reptiles or amphibians and overall just a really easy to keep isopod they tend to like it a bit more wet than other isopods these next isopods are Porcilio lavis marble and what makes them kinda neat is there's a whole bunch of different color variety within the population that I have so some of them are almost black some of them are more gray some brown some white some peach colored which makes for some nice variation um, if you were to keep them as pets. These also seem to breed pretty prolifically and are great for uh, terrariums and vivariums. These would make uh, good food for larger you know, species such as geckos or gnolls, uh, different types of lizards you might keep in a terrarium or vivarium. And overall, uh, pretty easy to keep. This next species is Porcilio pruinosis, the orange variation. These are also known as powder orange isopods. They come in a couple different other color variants uh, that I don't have. Uh, this particular species of isopod seem to reproduce really quickly. You can see there's a bunch of springtails in there with them as well. And these guys are kind of cool just because they're orange. Uh, also do really great in vivariums and terrariums and I would say if you're trying to use them as a feeder they would work great because they do reproduce so quickly. This next isopod is Porcilio hoffmansegii. These are pretty big isopods you can see compared to my finger there the uh, largest one is uh, pretty much full-grown adult and then there's some juveniles there um, these guys seem to like it a little bit drier um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend them for a terrarium or vivarium because they don't like it quite as humid and moist but kind of a cool isopod to keep if you're looking to keep some big isopods These next little guys are Porcilio lavis, the dairy cow morph or form. These are probably one of my favorite isopods just because their appearance, but also they reproduce incredibly fast. I bought some several months ago. I think I bought 12 adults, and now I've got to have five or 600 juveniles. Uh, they just reproduce at an astounding rate. Um, these also would do great in a terrarium or vivarium and would actually work really well as a feeder for small 
uh, reptiles and amphibians because the rate they reproduce. So just a great little isopod with a uh, good personality and great growth rate. This next isopod here is Porcilio magnificus and as you might guess from the name they are a fairly large isopod. I think they're one of the largest that you can get in the hobby and they're kinda cool because they've got that nice orange color. They also seem to like it a bit drier and you might notice I've got some uh, old snake shed in there with them. Uh, on one of the forums that I'm on, I noticed that a lot of people actually feed their isopod snake shed. And some of the different species seem to like it. Um, some of them don't really care for it, but I offer it to all of them. It's just an extra form of nutrient for them, so that's why that's in there. Last but not least are Armadillium maculatum, the zebra morph. These look a lot more like the standard roly polies you'd find in your yard, other than the zebra striping. And they're a pretty small little isopod, seem to be pretty hardy. They do like it a bit drier, but can also handle pretty moist conditions as well. And I was a little bit excited to find some some offspring from these guys just uh, about a week ago and you can see there's a ton of springtails in this culture as well uh, it seems like the springtails really do well in my isopod cultures and I'm not sure if it's the extra leaf litter or the bark but they seem to thrive in there pretty well All right, thanks for tuning in today, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, go ahead and give it a like. That would help me out. If you're not subscribed already, go ahead and subscribe so you can see more awesome content. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for future videos, just drop me a comment down below and I'll try to answer it for you or try to make videos so you guys can enjoy some more good content. So you guys have a great day. Thanks for watching.